So apparently, oh fuck, I, I even can't touch the cables. They're they are too hot to, to touch. Welcome to a new video. My name is Lupo and in this video I want to test this cheap AliExpress inverter that I bought for the Mountain Hut project. And it is rated as 2000 watts. So we will try it out and see if we can really pull the 2000 watts. If we take a look into the specs, the specs say, okay, 2000 watts max, so peak power. Then we have 800 watts for 30 minutes and continuous power is 1000 watts. It's also interesting that the 30 minutes rating is lower than the continuous one. I thought continuous is what I can pull all the time, but apparently it's not, at least not for this one. If we have a look here, we have this 12 volt plug. Here we can definitely not pull uh, 2000 watts. Then we have better cables here, a bit thicker cables. I think it should be something around 16 square millimeters or something like that. But yeah, let's have a look. Also the clamps, I think that's a huge problem. I'm not sure about those clamps. If we can pull, I don't know, 100 amps with those clamps. Then we have the terminals here next to the fan. Okay, and then there is a nut. So we connect the cable to a nut. And my guess is that it's also a steel nut. I have here my shunt so that I can measure uh, what we pull, what's here, voltage, ampere, and how many watt hours I already pulled. So then I connect the negative one to my shunt here. I hope you can see that and read that, otherwise I will tell you later. Anyways, okay, if I turn it on, the fan turns on and we pull 7.3 watts just for the fan and that the inverter is on. So we have two lights here so that the USB is powered and the power LED. If I turn it off, oh, okay, the USB is still there. Maybe you can even charge it without turning it on. So I found interesting load here. So um, I use this pump because it's the smallest one we have here in the fire department, so it's 400 watts. I also found this really old light. I guess it's 1000. I hope it's 1000, but I'm not sure. And of course I have also just a heater. Okay, so I have connected now the converter, this pump, water pump, 400 watts. So let's turn that on and let's see what we pull. We pull 240 watts and 17 amps just for the start. There is nothing warm at the moment, everything good. That was quite okay for 200 watts. Nothing happened, so... Okay, so I think I will directly try the 1000 watt uh, lamp here. And then let's see how much we can pull. Okay, 30 watts. Nothing happens. Ah, now it... Now it's pulling 900. Oh, now it's getting... Ooh, now they are really getting warm. Oh, fuck. Oh. I think I have to turn that off. So I just stopped the test because the cables got really warm. Let me find my device to check the temperature. Okay, I think we can repeat this test and see how it works. It was also a bit weird at the beginning. Um, at the beginning there was this, this red light in the middle, this fault light. And it turned red. So that was the overload cutoff. 
but after some time I guess the lamp itself heated up and then pulled less less energy and at the end it worked so let's try this again so now I turn on the light Ah, and now you can see the, the red faulty light blinking let's see if it okay now it works you can see the light is definitely on now the fan is slower again we are pulling 900 almost 1000 watts 80 amps so let's measure the temperature 83 okay let's see what is on the cables or on the terminals maybe they got quite hot before that it also smells a bit you can definitely smell oh it's 40 degrees okay let's see this terminal 40 degrees 48 oh wow 60 we had max 60 degrees okay i think that's definitely too warm here they get a bit warmer but that's completely fine nothing critical but this one oh wow the cables they get really hot oh fuck that's super hot here i don't know if you can see that 60 degrees we got 60 degrees 80 degrees somewhere here on the cables okay the cables the terminals are really not good and we are pulling 970 watts so i guess that's definitely too hot i will stop that for now so apparently oh fuck i, I even can't touch the cables they're they are too hot to to touch and apparently okay yeah this one is also now quite warm it was a continuous load of 1000 watts i wouldn't try to do that even 800 watts i think for 30 minutes as written in the specs i think that's definitely not a good idea i want to just do another test and i also want to measure the the voltage drop that we have on the cables if we measure the voltage drop here there is no drop at all if we turn the inverter on we have three millivolt okay that's okay that's not a lot that's fine let's turn on the light again okay so it's the faulty led is flickering now again i don't know if you can see that here and now the light is on the fan goes down and everything starts so we are pulling now 970 watts and now we measure the voltage drop here and now we have a voltage drop of 0 0.5 volts so half a volt and 80 amps so that means that we have around 40 watts loss on the cable so we are heating with 40 watts now the cables i mean no wonder that they get hot that's on especially on this short cable we are talking about half a volt that's a lot that's really a lot and if we just measure the temperature again here on the terminal we got 55 already again just have to find the right spot 80 60 oh wow that was 68 here i guess it's really the terminal itself 70 oh wow i have to stop that so apparently the terminal the ring terminal gets really really hot it was 80 here let's see this one is fine on the clamp side but apparently the hottest side is exactly where the cables are connected so i think it's just a really bad connection the ring terminals so the cables and the, the ring terminals are really bad of this inverter the inverter itself it stays okay-ish but we are losing half of a volt and that's a lot with 80 amps because then yeah we lose around 40 watts just on this short cabling there 
and we also lose it on both sides, right? Wow, that's a lot. Okay, so that's the last test. Uh, you can hear, I guess, that it's already a bit louder. Um, we are pulling 300 watts and it is just to see if we pull that for a couple of minutes um, how it behaves. So far everything stays cold. So I increased to 430 watts now and I'm doing that now with this load. Uh, my mixer on high speed the heat gun 300 watts that's about 100 I guess and then just the fan of the heater it's around 50 watts or something like that so in total we have around 420 430 watts temperature is still okay the cables get hot I would say or warmer but so far it's quite okay let's see yeah, it's around 36 so it's definitely too hot but I think if we if we use proper cables then it should be also fine again the inverter itself it's 24 so that's quite okay okay so we're around 50 minutes later or 100 watt hours later I think we were at 130 watts watt hours um, with a continuous load of 420 watts the cables are I would say hot so let's see what we get here yeah 45 degrees 47 degrees Celsius here so the cables are definitely bad but besides that the inverter itself it's it's really cold 24 it's completely fine after 15 minutes of a continuous load of 420 watts and if we measure the voltage drop again so we have 0 0.2 volts so that means with 30 amps we're still heating with uh, something like 6 watts or something like that, the cable. And you can definitely feel that. But besides that, the inverter is, is really... It's cold after 15 minutes and that's quite good, I would say. So not that bad. I didn't expect that. You see if I find a hot spot somewhere. No. So, everything good. Let's turn it off. Oh, that's nice and quiet. Here you can see how it is connected here. That's still hot. So that is the problem. Um, the cable is also a bit thin. It's definitely not 16 millimeters. I don't know exactly what it is, uh, but definitely less. So I guess if you if you use the, the inverter with a thicker cable and a proper cable and also proper connections and not of course the clamp, then I think it's it's quite okay. 400 watts continuous load wasn't a problem for 15 minutes and I think it's even for 30 minutes it wouldn't be a huge problem for the inverter. Uh, but going for 800 watts or even 1000 watts as you could see it got quite warm already so I wouldn't I wouldn't do that so that was my test for the this inverter for the uh, I don't know the name it's rebranded anyways everywhere on Aliexpress TXGAX2000 watts whatever it means I will put the link into the description anyway so that you can find the exact model but I think even if you look at it how it looks like you will find it on Aliexpress quite quickly even for a better price maybe than my 30 euros so my verdict is it's quite okay for a lower load um, exactly what I need at my mountain hut so maybe for a jigsaw something like that to just cut a board uh, 600 watts for I don't know a minute or something like that then it's completely fine also the continuous um, load of 400 watts for 15 minutes 100 watt hours was no problem at all I mean the cables are really bad you have to use your own cabling otherwise you will run into problems
So with these cables, those are really cheap. So use your own cables, but then I think you will be fine. And don't pull 1000 watts or even 800 watts for a longer time. Even for a minute, I think it could be a problem. I mean, if you're next to the inverter and see when it catches fire, then I think it might be okay. And of course, don't connect critical devices like a computer or other electronics. I think I wouldn't trust this thing, but for a machine or something like that, that should be quite okay, in my opinion. And if you have any other questions, please write that down in the comments. I can try to answer that. Or if you think that I should do another test or um, that I did something wrong, please let me know in the comments and we can discuss that. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.